What's up, weirdlings? What's going on? Welcome to What's Up, Weirdlings. It's May 8th. Wow, it's Monday, May 8th. Welcome to May. It's amazing to me that we are already like a third of the way through the year. This is just weird that things are already going on. But it's May and we're working our way through things. We had a lot of fun and exciting things going on. It's not just me tonight. There is a Mary here. She's just doing social media right now. There's not a me. I'm just kidding. You're just, I'm just you're a voice. Illusion. I'm you're, a voice. You're a voice in the... In the wind yeah. and the things, and oh no, it looks like we've got a weird frame or something going on. Oh, what the heck happened there? Oh, Who knows? Anyway. We can't tell. We have no reference monitor. That's right. We have no reference monitor. We're good. We, we we're have, solid. We're this is how you roll. Babe. This is how we roll. No, shut up. Here. Don't do this. Don't, no, 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 stop. Too late. Already Stop did it. it. Already no. did it. No. Already, you ruined the stream. Just I, start over. No. Just start over. It's all well, ruined. I just ruined Mel's ears and everybody else's. No feeling. No feeling, I'm sorry. Hear that? No feeling. We have a lot to talk about today, guys. Yes, we so do. We're going to get into that. First off, thanks for joining us. Thanks for being here with all the things. Make sure you leave comments and all the things and all the places wherever you're at, whether you're on Beam, YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, whatever. Leave all of your comments because we want to know what you're having to say and what your thoughts are about everything. Also, make sure you follow us on our Twitter things that should be popping up every once in a while down here. You are just a mess today. You are just I, a mess. Mark, Josh. Josh. <laughs> Uh, put all the Twitters down there and make sure you tag us on Twitter. Just want to hear what you're talking about too, because we have a lot of things to talk about. We're here to talk about all the things that we found interesting over the past week or so, and I can tell you right now, the thing I found the most interesting of the past week is that freaking Wonder Woman trailer that blew up yesterday at the MTV. I wonder if she's TV ever Awards. a mess like I am. Wonder Woman? Yeah. I, I mean, she's not I mean, perfect. She's, yeah, she's gonna be a mess. We're only human, but not really. You're not really human. We're flesh and blood. I mean, kind, kind of, of depending, on, <laughs> depending on how, what story you want to deal with. But at the end of the day, the freaking Wonder Woman trailer was spectacular. Yes, it was. It was so epic. Okay, so, yeah, I got to see the first trailer sure. in, like, the big screen, right, right. and that got me super excited. Yeah. And then this trailer is, it's Little Diana, please. Oh, that Little please. Diana, she's, she's hardcore. Perfect. I love her so Gosh, much. Gosh, she's so perfect. Oh. There's this one like glimpse, it's just like that long in the trailer, where she's like riding a horse through a meadow, just charging ahead with this war cry. I'm like, oh my god, that's knew, the perfect Wonder Woman. I knew I was going to love her when I saw her little like evil, I want that sword face. Oh yeah. And now uh -huh. I'm just like, my ovaries hurt just looking at her. <laughs> I, my ovaries don't hurt. But it's okay. You, know, you don't, I mean... We're all built with different equipment. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Long story short, though, the baby Diana is freaking amazing. She's so cool. The grown-up Diana is so cool. So badass. Uh, just, I really love. There's actually one part in here that somebody screen capped, and they actually loved showing it because they're surrounded in an alley, getting shot at, and uh, all I can think is Chris Pine. I can't think of his actual name right now. I'm sorry, but he is like. Hiding against the wall, and she's just up there deflecting bullets all around him and everything like that. It was so freaking brilliant. Which was a continuation oh. of the first scene where he's like, I need you to stand back. And she's like, Bink. Yep, and he and goes, he'll... Maybe not. Maybe. I'll be over here. Yeah. You just this is the thing. do your thing over there. Oh, I'm so excited. But there's something sad about Wonder Woman that <sighs> came out. Do we have to jump that quick into the sad? I wasn't oh, done with you, the happy. You, okay, what are you still happy about? Well, I'm so I'm happy not... about everything because there was so much. There was explosions. There was great stuff. We but, talked a little bit about you were really happy about the villain because oh, the, villain, yeah, she, yeah. the villain's a woman. The villain is a Sorry. woman. Sorry. Like, so the reason I'm excited about that is because in general, villains, like there are women villains in, in stuff. Sure. But in the recent flux of heroes and villains, there have not been a whole lot of women villains. There's been Nebula. There's been Nebula, uh, which... Uh, Enchantress in Suicide Squad. 
than see Suicide Squad. Sorry, I can explain I'm missing, why. You're I'm, missing a lot, yes. honestly. I mean, but, love you, Suicide Squad. Mean it. Yeah. You're not missing a lot. But there's not been there's not been a whole, and it's not that there's not a flux of really great women villains sure. in these superhero flicks, right? Or superhero like worlds. It's just we haven't seen them. Yeah, so it's no. Been yeah. Great to finally like see one. And she seems like really creepy too. I don't know oh, much yeah. about her and everything like that, but she seems really. She kind of reminds me of a like scarecrow kind of. She kind of looks like it, yeah, yeah. I get that vibe. I definitely yeah. get that vibe. Poisony and scary. I and think stuff. it's really interesting to me when I look at this trailer in general because we've talked about this before. How DC movies in general are really just dark and just really is like you've said many times, they're very gray. They don't have a lot yeah. of saturation to them. I really love the contrast that they've made with this. Everything on Themyscira is just super bright, super bright, and everything. And then when she gets into the real world. They start bumping that saturation down. It's yeah, it, it, but amazing. it makes sense for the world, and it feels good. Like you can, when you're watching the trailers, that felt good. Yeah, to yeah, me. it felt like, right. It felt like finally there is bright and happiness in the DC universe somewhere, kind somewhere, of on a mystical island that no one really can get, get to, to, or except anything. for if you just accidentally fly no. your plane into it. Although I think those Nazis found it. I mean, it. It. I mean, Nazis. it looked like it. Nazis. They're all about. <laughs> they're all about mystical stuff, man. That's a Nazi thing. I don't know if you guys know this or not. But anyways, uh, yeah, there, there's just so much about this. The effects look great. The act, Gal Gadot is Wonder Woman. Let's just, there is, I can't we imagine modern, anybody else. Yeah, we needed a modern Wonder Woman, and she's it. Like, yeah, she's by it. By and far. She's great. And I have to say, even though I love Adrian Palicki, I am really glad that Wonder Woman TV series never really fell <laughs> took <her> off. Because <laughs> that, I just, it just, I don't think it could meet what we're dealing with here right now. With this. No, no. It doesn't, it's a different time. <laughs> I really hope this movie stands up. I, th- I'm, I have high hopes for the movie. I don't have high hopes for loving Warner Brothers very for very long. Yeah, you know. I mean, because Warner Brothers, look, Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers. Can we talk about your marketing? Look, can we can we talk for a second? I'm really upset with you right now. Gal Gadot got a lot of crap for being kind of a you know naturally gorgeous, like attractive, kind of skinny Amazonian woman, and like she got crap from that from the internet. Like, the internet gave her crap, and everyone's like, no, she's fine, let's not body shame, even though she's, like, skinny, let's, let's not body shame. And then you go around, and you put her stuff on diet food? Like, re- really? Can we just not? Can, like, it's a bad idea. It's, it's a bad idea. Like, put her, put her on apples, put her on bananas, put her on anything that's not, like, body shaming women to be thinner. Really? And it's called Think Thin, right? It's called Think Thin. Like, These are actually protein bars. For Think Thin. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, the fact they're protein bars for a company called Think Thin. It's, yeah. it's, there's an obvious market ploy there. And messaging's it's, off. It's like, like you cross the wires and you just didn't think that one through. But you know, I have to, I have to say, because we were talking about, you know, Warner Brothers in this. I feel pretty certain that after all the flack that Warner Brothers has taken, and the fact that they stood behind Gal Gadot through all this and they yeah. did all this, they, they knew this was going on and they stuck through it. They push through, they're getting a movie out that looks great, and I guarantee you there's some executive at Warner Brothers that saw a picture on Twitter with this promotion for Think Thin and Wonder Woman, and they're like, who, who thought this was a good idea? I hope who, so. There's some executive that is really mad at the marketing department at Warner Brothers. Right I, I really hope so. I really hope so. Not that I've heard one way or the other, no, but no. it's... It's just, it's frustrating. Like, that kind of mixed messaging for our female superheroes that are just supposed to be, can't they just be cool and badass anyway? Can't we just put them on cereals and Wheaties and, like, the normal stuff? Sure. Do we have to put them on diet foods? I mean, yeah. It's not It's not like you're seeing, like, you know, Chris Evans on diet food. No. Like no, in fact, that was the one thing you asked me about. You're like, wait, do we ever put, because I, I thought we put male superheroes on, pro, I went looking. Nope. I couldn't. Couldn't find it, guys. If you if right. you know of one, you let us know because we couldn't find any. I don't know of any. Yeah, so like, please let me know. Is this the thing that happens for our male superheroes? Because I like I thought it did, and then I was wrong. So it's just can we just not do this for our female just not superheroes? Do that. Yeah, unless you're gonna put Chris Evans on like Nutrisystems or something like that. No, it would have to be some kind of bulking ingredient. Like it would have to be some kind of like protein powder like I guess. which yeah. don't get me wrong body shaming in our food system altogether just needs to go but but like can we at least have even ground if we're gonna objectify like one side let's, 
I think I think we've ended up in this conversation on the wrong side of the line. Okay. I don't know. Rolling I don't back. know. I feel like can, maybe we're on the wrong side of the line. Can we put Gal Gadot on apples? I find Gal Gadot apple. Just like <laughs> You know what? I would I would just like to see Gal Gadot on cool stuff. Anything. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna get figures. I'm not even just. Oh no, there are figures out. There, there are. Yeah, yeah, was, are we I, already I, got figures out? Okay, we're good. There, we're already we're doing better. Stuff. We're doing usual. that stuff. But long story short, the trailer's out. Make sure you check the trailer. Yes. It's amazing. Another trailer recently hit that you didn't even know about. I don't think until it popped, and that is Blade Runner 2049. I think your head just exploded just a little bit. Uh, this actually, people have been talking about a sequel to Blade Runner forever, and 2049 has been in development and production for a little while now. And now the trailer has hit. And this is, basically, she is speechless. She has not been able to, like, word. It's hard It's hard to word for this. So, I was a big fan of the original Blade Runner. Like, a massive fan. Because it had some, like, really great conversational pieces about what's humanity. And sure. what is, like, like what, who are we? And what is, like, what does it take to be human? And I love those conversation pieces. And also just cinematically. Like, it was one of the first films I cared about from a cinematography standpoint. It had some, shot. And it had some beautiful moments that made you go, wow. Yeah. This is real. Like, this is near future, not, like, crazy far future. Right. And, and it, it technically actually really is near future. Yeah, I, I know. Uh, 2049. Oh. And you know what really blows me away about that is this is set 30 years after the original movie, which means the original movie is 2019. We're just a couple of years away, And folks. we're really not far from that future either. Few, well, well, okay, some of the parts of that future, but like the, the AI part, yeah, I don't we think we're, there. I don't no, think. No, we're not quite there yet. No. Mm, no. Could be wrong. Who knows? I don't there are know. people. There, there are things happening. There's like a brothel that's going to be all full of AI. There's um, a brothel? That's a whole nother news segment. But yeah, there was, there was a, I just read this the other day that there's going to be like a full brothel in somewhere in, I think, Amsterdam that's, that's full of. Surprising. That's full of animatronic. Well, okay. Yeah. So there you go. But so I don't think we're that far. But I think it's real. Okay. So this film though looks very different from the original Blade Runner. I'm just uh, gonna like. That, <laughs> it does, well, it does. It does look different. But I think that it. Uh, I think it really adequately echoes the feel of the original movie. Absolutely. Like, very well. You can tell it's the same world, and mm -hmm. you can tell it's the same like universe we're dealing with. Right. But. The style of film feels very different. Whereas, whereas the original film had this like noir, like detective feel to it. Mm -hmm. This one feels a lot more action packed, a lot more of like an action thriller type of film. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, I don't know too much about the story so far, so I don't really know yeah. how much they're going to be following with the mystery. It's, it's clear there's a mystery they're investigating. I'm not absolutely. sure what it is. If there wasn't, that wouldn't. That'd be very like that'd be so far off from I like know, a Blade Runner that's film. So weird. <laughs> you know, I love the fact that in this trailer too, they actually the soundtrack sounds like the original as well. I love the fact that you guys are keeping that vibe in there. It's just amazing. Uh, Harrison Ford's in it. Which what? I'm so glad. Like, but. they could have done the film without him, but I'm glad that he's back. It, it was great. I mean, Melanie hurt my heart a little bit ago because of that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to say it, because we're sitting there having a conversation about it. She's like, who's the old guy? It's like, Harrison Ford. Yeah, oh, him. Oh, oh God. God. <laughs> oh, what happened? Oh, man. That was the worst, but that's okay. It's okay. There's because there's Jared Leto in the film. It's, it's really like... She was distracted. It's, the distraction level was Between high. Ryan Gosling and Jared Leto in this, she was totally distracted yeah. and just couldn't think of Harrison Ford. It's okay. Yeah. It can happen. But uh, long story short, that is that is coming out, I think October 8th is when that's coming out. I, I do not have it written down, so I'm going to take you... Oh, I'm sure it's October yeah. 8th. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, or no, October 6th. Boom, there you go. Yeah, a couple of days, whatever. Uh, I think that's right. If I'm wrong, let us know in the comments. But I'm pretty sure that it's October 6th when that's coming out. And um, watch the trailer and get excited. And watch explosions. Trailer. It looked and good. like. Ugh. Also, watch the original Blade Runner. If you Please. haven't watched it, watch the original Blade Runner. It's totally worth your time. It's a great, great Maybe movie. Maybe I should it's a do classic. a movie night of Blade Runner. If I can totally do a movie night of Blade I Runner. I have to find, like, uh, it might be hard to find a digital copy of it, depending mm. on who's got the. the you know, stuff, stuff for that, but stuff. might be, that might be worth doing a movie night over. Yeah. If you've not seen Blade Runner, it's, it's going to make you feel things and think things and you're just going to, like, there's not going to oh, be a whole man. lot, like, there's no talking in that co-watching guys. It's a guys. thinker, man. It's a thinker. Like, you gotta, mm. you question life. Yeah, in general, just don't talk in general in movies, though. Let's no, just we do clear. all the time. No. It's actually, it's like the chat room is like a whole mystery science theater situation. Well, it's that's a little funny. different. That's a little different. You're in a chat room. I can get that. But if you're like in a group of people, don't talk in theater. Oh, yeah. No, This no, is why I go to the draft no. house, folks. Yeah. Yeah, when we're, we're doing the rabbit thing, like, though, if you open up chat, you can just see, like, us mystery science theatering the whole thing. 
I kind of love that. It's pretty, it's pretty it's fun. Kind of fun. Let's talk about other trailers <laughs> that came out. There was another amazing freaking trailer that came out last week. The trailer for The Dark Tower. Oh, God. Finally get a trailer for The Dark Tower. I've been waiting for this. This is like another one that's a mind blower. I've been waiting for this forever. I've been waiting. Like, they've been, they've been playing with us forever about this series. Like, you're going to get it one day. Yeah. I Maybe. mean, it was supposed to be a series, movies. Now, movies that are going into series is going into a movie. There's, I don't even know how this is going to end up. But The Dark Tower movie... The trailer hit, and holy crap, it looks amazing. Uh, Idris Elba I, is the perfect gunslinger. That's I loved cool. so much about seeing him in that. All the little details, like how he would even load the guns, was freaking ridiculous. Matthew McConaughey, for the longest time, Matthew McConaughey, I think, kind of was a joke, honestly. Uh, he is not a joke anymore. No, he's I think, not. but I think he's really shown, like, it took him being a joke to, like, Show the characters he's good at. He's good at playing crazy characters. A little bit, and, yeah. And when you play crazy or some kind of like really mag- like crazy large personality, yeah, it's really easy for your first appearances to be like this weird jokey situation. But you know what? He he did a damn fine job in Days and Confused too. Yeah, he did. He wasn't crazy. He was just all right, all right. I mean, that's just who he was, <laughs> and he just, was good that's, at that's it. That's true. But between True Detective and uh, he's done so much since then, where I've just seen him and been blown away by his ability, and seeing him as a man in black in these trailers, scared, nailed it. I was worried when I heard that casting at first because, like, really Matthew McConaughey? And I haven't read The Dark Tower. I know the storyline. I know how it works. I, I come at this from a little bit of different perspective. I was concerned about him being the man in black, but this trailer has completely put all that aside. I am going to be rereading the books. Because I need to remember the storyline a little bit better. It's been a few years. I read the first three, and I I will say, listening to Idris talk, like do the the prayer uh-huh. of the gunslinger, I just I melted on the inside, and I went, yes, yes. I'm uh, so- I, I believe that you're feeling about the Dark Tower like I was feeling when I saw my first trailer for the Lord of the Rings. Yeah, no, I'm gonna be falling every inch of this. Oh my god! Now, now that I know that it's like I have been holding off on really chasing down this news because I just didn't want to ever get my hopes up really far. Right. Because they've been teasing for years. They were so like, long. maybe we'll do it, maybe we won't, and we'll do it. Okay, we're doing it, we're doing it. We swear, but we're not gonna show you anything. So now that there's something, I'm gonna be like all over it. Every trailer, everything. It's gonna be hard. You're gonna be like, Mary, what's the Dark Tower news? Don't, don't ask. Don't ask. The rest of the show is gonna be that way. I have to say I'm really glad that they kind of held off because I think uh, a book is quote-unquote iconic as The Dark Tower. If they had started like putting out some production stills, people would start picking things apart. They'd be like, oh, that's... The, the fact that they are showing finished footage like coming up to release. Release is August 4th. Yeah. So this is coming up pretty quick. We're looking at a finished movie at this point, essentially. I really think that was a good idea on their part to, to eliminate the, the fanboys and girls of the world just tearing and nitpicking at everything. It's already movie. happening. There's still a lot of nitpicking happening, it happening will happen. just because of the fact of how much storyline you were given in the trailer. Uh-huh. And I think that has to do with the fact that they're going to pretty much blow through the first novel and get you into the second novel pretty quickly. Right. And that's what I'm getting the feel from. So it feels like they're not spending the time on the first novel. They're just going to be like, here's what the storyline is. This is why we're giving it to you in the trailer. And my hope is that they're going to spend the second, like, most of the time in this, like, second part of the universe. Right. I got to tell you, uh, I don't care. Because yeah. It's just, as long as it's good film. Yeah. It's like, it's You know, if, if you're going to be complaining about the dark, and these books are massive books. They're I like mean. like three, four hundred pages each. How many of them are there? Seven. It's a lot of stuff to read, folks. It's a lot of stuff to read. If you're going to blow through a book like that, it's fine. Tell me the good story. Tell me the good story that's going to make an amazing movie. I'm happy with it. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm hoping it's good enough to like actually make it a full series. It's been, out of all of Stephen King's works, it's been the one that I've wanted them to do for the longest time. Right. Because it feels like the one that was made for cinema. Right. So I'll, I'll be honest. There, there's been a lot of talk about this, and I have kind of, Fallen off my radar for a while, and I haven't really followed. I wanted to get a chance. I didn't get a chance to do the research before here. The original plan is that they were going to do a movie, then go into a TV show. Yes. And have that series, and then go back into a movie kind of thing. I don't know if that's still the plan or not. Is that, that still the plan? I, I don't know. I haven't had a chance to look it up. If that was the plan, though, uh, you're looking at another Firefly situation. Do you think so? Absolutely. If, if that were to be the plan, 
the gunslinger, in my opinion, could be as good of storytelling as the Firefly. See, series. I took that a totally different way because when you said that, I thought, you mean they're going to cancel it after eight episodes? Oh, that's oh, totally yeah. what I thought no, of that. No, no but not I, at all. I, I, mean, right. I, I was thinking more along the lines of the universe and the styling and the feel and the type of storytelling. It's mm-hmm. com- like it's a, a similar enough universe that you're going to have that feeling of oh, space western kind of. All right, fair enough. Fair so. enough. It looks really good. Regardless, it's coming out August fourth. So make sure you check that one out. If you haven't seen the trailer, you've got to check the trailer out. Do it. It is Do freaking it. amazing. Uh, another trailer came out. So many trailers right now. Trailers. So many trailers. Oh, my God. Trailers. The Defenders trailer on Netflix. Netflix? That works, too. Netflix. The Defenders trailer on Netflix came out. Uh, what did you think? Because you've seen Iron Fist. You didn't Didn't, didn't, didn't really like didn't it. Didn't like Iron Fist. I'm excited for the Defenders. Okay, why? What, what was it about this trailer that made you excited? Because... They in the trailer alone, they establish the relationships in a way that makes sense for these four people to be getting together. All right. There's conflict. They're not really enjoying each other's like company, like Luke Cage and Iron Fist. No, they don't. They don't like each other at all, as far as you can tell. No, not at all. Like Jessica Jones and Daredevil, like interacting in the way they're. Of course, of course, he's gonna be busting Jessica Jones out of like of some. Course, yeah, shape. who else are you gonna do? Well. He's got to have some connection to Luke Cage, right? He's probably busted him out of jail, too, because Luke so. Cage is in jail right now. That was now. how it ended at the end, because when Luke Cage was going to jail, someone said, I know somebody. Yeah, I that's know right. somebody, yeah. That's right. Yep. Fair so, enough. like, it makes sense. And really, like, I don't like... I didn't like Danny Rand as a character, but watching him punch... Spoilers. Sorry. Spoilers? Well, I said something about the Oh, Luke yeah. Cage Sorry. Sorry. Luke Cage spoilers. Anyways, I, I apologize. Danny Rand punching things. Uh, iron fisting. Uh, iron fisting Luke Cage. Whoa. <laughs> that's that's inappropriate. It's inappropriate. Let's let's move on to something else. Kristen Ritter's back, which is exciting. Here's the other really exciting thing about this. Uh, Sigourney Weaver is going to be in the Defenders, and Sigourney Weaver is the villain. Uh, she's named Alexandra. I don't know much about her. Uh, Sigourney Weaver looks like a badass villain. I'm just saying, she just looks like a badass. I mean, villain. she would be. Let's she be, would let's be, be, yeah. Honest, like, right. I mean, if she I'm thinking of, of women who are going to be a badass villain, Sigourney Weaver, Carrie Ann Moss, I think, could be a badass villain. She's kind of an anti-hero kind of thing as it is, yeah. but uh, yeah, she looks amazing, and everybody says that she is tearing it up in the show in that role. So Sigourney really Weaver say. has the ability to just really be tough. Period. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So like, villain or hero, tough makes sense for her. Like, mo. She just. Owns a room, man. When yeah. she just walks in, it's just like she you're stands. Like, oh, you're like, crap. oh man. I'm Sigourney just gonna Weaver. find a corner. Um, it's gonna be my corner, Sigourney. Yep. Leave me alone. Yep, I'll hide over <laughs> here. You do whatever you want to do. I'm really excited about this one. This one's coming out as August 14th. Yes. So again, like Dark Tower, watch it one week. Then Defenders. There's so much stuff happening in the summer right now. This really is going to be. There's so- a yeah. good summer for movies, TV, all the things like that. I'm. Uh... It's it's. There's gonna be so much. I don't know how I'm gonna get anything done. It's not gonna like. I'm gonna have to like figure out a way to just have the discipline to like work and then just realize that I'm never gonna sleep so that I can get all the television in. <sighs> sleep. All the television. In I all mean, movies. you only need a few hours, right? Just to. To maintain few... sanity, I guess. Yeah, I mean that's all you gotta do. Just maintain sanity. Is all we really have to Gearman, do. Gearman, teach me your ways. You, Gearman, I don't know how you. <laughs> Gearman, you and oh man, sleep. one of these days. We have a couple of people in, in chat who usually don't sleep. Maybe That's we can true. just like we can tap into them for some knowledge. That's true. Uh, let's talk about some other stuff that came up. Uh, there was word coming out that HBO is developing four spinoffs of Game of Thrones. What are they going to be about? I don't know. Okay. Well, okay. I say we don't know. Uh, there's there's a lot of assumption that at least one of them is going to be a prequel series that's going to be looking at some of Martin's source material. He has a lot of stuff okay. that happened before the actual Game of Thrones book that he's written. They could be going into that stuff. Uh, I have no idea. I have no clue, and I'm not sure how I feel about it. Uh, do you think that why why what what's, well, the, what's the hesitation? Game of Thrones really was, in my opinion, uh, a significant TV show in the way that it changed the way we're consuming things and what's acceptable on TV and and how you make big, sweeping epics. People used to say you couldn't make a huge, epic production for TV. Well, lies? Uh, Yeah, this is the most epic thing in the history of epic things, maybe. Maybe? I don't know. That might be a little 
it's maybe pr- a little it's, bit early. It was definitely one of the front runners for the new wave of television. Oh right? yeah, I think so. Absolutely. What we're going on seven years, eight years going into season seven coming up. Yeah. So it definitely was one of the front runners in making sure that hey, look, you can do big, big, big production stuff, and, and it will we be are. epic. Yeah. And it will have a fandom around it, but like so, there's the spinoff situation. If we don't know what it's about, that's kind of strange. Are we looking at like little, like little skitty things, or like? Well, here's the thing spots? about it. This is HBO saying that they want to develop these things, and that's all they're saying is that they're saying that they want to develop these spinoffs. The good news is that David and I'm sorry, I forget his name. Uh, David Benioff and David Weiss are back in, and they're going to have a role, and it probably is producers instead okay. of writers. Uh, one of the concerns with that is that maybe part of the charm with the original Game of Thrones was their role in writing. Are we going to lose that? The writing staff that's going to be on board sounds really good. They have some legitimate credentials behind them, and it sounds like they're very talented staffs. Uh, George R. R. Martin is going to be working on two of them with some writers as well, so that's exciting. For those of you who want the books, maybe not so much exciting. <laughs> it's like, finish your freaking book, George. Um, the thing that I like about what HBO said about this is that They've been very clear that they are developing these series. They're not putting a timeline on a timeline on it. They just want them to work on it, come back with something good, however long that takes. If they come back and they don't like it, they're going to pass. They're not saying, no, we have to have Game of Thrones. They're going to take the time to make this right. And they did that with Game of Thrones. They completely reshot the pilot to Game of Thrones after the first screening of it, completely reshot it. They did the same thing with Westworld. Westworld was pushed back so long for rewrites and reshoots multiple times because it just wasn't working. Those decisions by HBO, super smart, and ended up in a damn fine production both ways, Westworld and Game of Thrones. If they have that same philosophy here with these spinoffs, all right, uh, I'll give this a chance. I'm just worried that they're milking a dead cow. Yeah, yeah, and that's a, that's a legitimate, like... That's a, like the Marvel burnout situation, yeah, right? Like yeah. it feels like it could lead to that. Like we've had this universe, we've built a lot around this universe. Do we need spin-offs from this universe or do we just need to complete this universe and call it beautiful and done? It, as long as HBO is willing to make sure that it's not crap, yeah. I'm sure everyone who's a fan of that world is going to be excited to see more. I, I would, I mean, I'd watch it. I mean, come on. If it comes yeah. out, I'll watch it. It'd be fine. I'll but as long as it's not, a, like, you don't want to be let down by it. No, I d- right? definitely, no. Yeah. After the amount of loyalty that I've got with this Game of Thrones stuff, I do not want to be let down by that, so. But now that we're talking about milking a uh, dry cow. Oh, you run with this one. <laughs> you run. Uh, re- b- um, guys, supposedly... Boondock Saints is getting a TV show prequel TV show thing. Uh, and it looks like the biggest scam ever. Wow, you just went straight in. Just, I just, I went just, right for it. No, wow. I mean, Rocco gonna... is doing the like, so wow. it's, okay, so there's this website where Rocco is like, blah, blah, blah. If you buy the prequel now, you will get the full thing as soon as it's done. But there is nothing done yet. And then Sean Patrick Flannery says, Hey, look, me and Norman aren't on it, so whatever is going on, we, we're just not a part of it right now. That's a thing. And how do you have Boondock Saints that's supposed to be a storyline about the brothers without the brothers? You can't. So is this about the dad? I don't know. I'm really, really concerned about this and really raging because this is one of my, like, fandoms. And thanks to Mel, I didn't, like, I had to discover how much I cared about this. I didn't realize how much I cared about it until Mel went, there's no Boondock Saints without Norman and Patrick. Patrick. Yes, Patrick. No, Sean. <laughs> I don't know why. See, I, I, I freaked myself out before freaked show. Out. I freaked out. myself out before show. I was like, if I get this wrong, I'm not really a fan. And then as soon as I came on set, that's it. It happens. You're more of a fan than me. I've never seen Boondock Saints. So <gasps> I know, I know. Okay, this is, this is my, this is my St. Patty's Day, like, ritual. To always watch Boondock Saints. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Absolutely. So we will have to like we'll have to remedy this on St. Patty's Day. Oh, uh, well, it's not, uh, there is a date. I mean, we've already happens, missed it. I know, but it, if you've not seen it now, it's not going to change in a year. Like the movie's done. <laughs> the movie's still there. Yeah. <laughs> Both of them are Fair. done. Fair. Uh, I just, how do you do? How, okay, so it's a movie. It's a char- It's a, it's a character movie. Mark. Okay. okay. Let's talk cinema, right? Okay. It's sure. a character film. Okay. It's about two characters. Great. How do you do uh, anything? Like, in that universe without those two characters. Anything. I, but, I mean, 
Okay, that, that's, a, that's a loaded question for me because if you give me long enough, I can figure out a way to make something work. So, I mean, I'll figure that out. But I do understand from a pure fandom perspective, for the fans of this movie, this is about those characters. And if they're not in there, then what's, what's the movie about? Or what's the TV show about? I'm sorry. Well, and it's, it's also they're not giving you a whole lot really at all about this. They kind of say, hey, look, it's coming. Da, 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 and they give you a pretty website. This is the thing that bothers me about this because when I looked into this stuff, it's not cast. It's not written. There's, there's nothing happening, but they're saying, hey, if you pre-order now, you're going to get the pilot, we'll give you this thing, and we'll give you this stuff. You'll see it before anybody else. Cool story. Uh, I mean, this really feels like a Kickstarter that's not going through Kickstarter. I don't no. think they have the funding for this. It's really, I don't think, it's, and I think they, there's enough fandom to possibly get them the funding if they wanted so? to do a Kickstarter, but they're not doing a Kickstarter and they don't have the right people on Like. I don't think Troy Duffy and Rocco can make this go on their own. Okay. Period. I don't, I don't think that can happen. And so, unless you tell me more about the story, is this about the dad? Like, so they're, like, their dad had this pretty pivotal role that you don't know a whole lot about from the movie. Mm-hmm. Right? So you go back a generation, you cast the brothers as kids. I could see that happening. Sure, there you that go. That makes sense, right? There you go. Mm-hmm. But I don't, that's not, they haven't told me that's what about. Well, again, we don't, it's we not We don't written. know anything. It's, we, I, I really don't know what there is about this other than the guy saying, hey, we're going to make a thing. It's going to be a TV show. But the thing is, this was one little thing I noticed about the video that really, it really got my hackles raised a little bit. Uh, he was talking about, if you buy this thing, you'll get this stuff before it airs on something. And I think there was a line of like, or whatever TV network. They don't have distribution. They don't, they don't have, have writing. They don't have anything They have this. a lot of assets that look, and let's be honest, a lot of those assets look like a, a college, maybe even high school student made them. Okay, I didn't look that close. Like, okay. in my opinion, like, the assets are, look like an HTML website made by a young college student. Or, like, All right. a, it's just, it's... I don't know. You get enough good assets in there, it looks great. Like, it looks like you got a DVD with the right picture on it. You got some other crazy stuff. You get a briefcase, but you don't know what's in it. He just says, there's just stuff in it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very, right. I'm very frustrated. Look, long story this. short, this is something that's happening. Uh, but the real story here is just go watch the original Boondock thing. Yeah, yeah. Watch it, then get mad with me. <laughs> then, get, then get mad. <laughs> and then share in the comments and join on the, the Twitters. Join the Boondock Saints cult and then get and, mad. <laughs> you know, if anybody out there knows more about this project and knows please. that there's like legitimate stuff going on, please let us know. I, yeah. I don't want this to be like super negative or anything like that. It no. just really feels weird. Yeah, just, eh. I don't tend to just fan rage to fan rage. You but really this don't. Was, this was just a moment. Yeah, you had that. This moment. was it's a fine. moment. You can have those. Thank moments. you guys for giving uh, me Let's that move moment. on to something else. Uh, some news in like the YouTube space. Yeah, what's going on? Philly D has officially left Group Nine Media. Uh, which, congratulations, Philip. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm surprised it actually took this long. Uh, I was surprised because we talked about this a little ways back, where there were some discussions from Philly D, and he was talking about changes going on. He took a little vacation. I think we were both surprised he actually came back at all. Yeah, yeah. He was, there was like, it, the mo- the video he put out is, there's some business going on. I can't talk about it. And I can't be in a good mood to put out videos, which is not like him. Philip no. DeFranco is one of the most professional people I have ever seen in that space. Like in the, the news media space. Right, right. Super fresh, professional. So for him to go, I, I just can't be in the mood to make videos for you guys for a week. That's a big deal. Big deal. But he came back and he kept making the videos. Now we're like a month or so since he's, since he's been back and he has announced that he is leaving Group 9 Media. He's taking the Philip Franco show and doing his own thing with it. Which, I, by God, rock and roll. Yeah. I mean, have fun with that. Enjoy. He's actually trying to get a lot of the funding through Patreon. I'm mm-hmm. sure he will have other sources of funding. I have zero doubt in my mind that he will be able to find other sources of funding. But the big thing that's really going to keep them afloat right now is going to be getting through this Patreon. And it looks like it's doing well. Yeah. Uh, you know, we looked up and they've got about 13,000 sponsors on there right now. They're not doing their totals, which I understand completely. Yeah. We just know that there's about 13,000. And looking at that, they're, they're going to make enough to keep making these shows. And that is awesome. Yeah, and I it's, think... it's going to be his own thing again. I think it's a good thing. He's always been, uh, in my opinion, one of my favorite ways to consume news. Like, when he, even when he was just being a producer on SourceFed. Mm-hmm. Like... The way he presents news and the way he insists on his media to present news has always been a way that I like to consume it. Yeah. He tries his best to like provide a mostly unbiased format and then his opinions at the end. So like he tries not to intermingle those two things. Right. I, I've always enjoyed that. For him to go out on his own, it makes sense. I'm 
glad he's doing it. I hope he has all the support. I think he does. I think he's got all the support he needs. But just so you guys know, this is a big deal. He's a huge YouTuber who is making a point to go completely crowdfunded. Or yeah. at least cr mostly crowdfunded. Right. I mean, I think the most of the stuff is going to be Patreon right now. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, any any creator in this space right now is looking for alternative sources all over the place. It's got to be a, a mixture of sources to stay afloat nowadays. Yep. Because, you know, Patreon could shut down tomorrow. Yeah. It could happen tomorrow and all that stuff would go away. If and... you tie yourself to one outlet like that, you're done. Yep. So, and he's actually had conversations about that before. When uh, there's the first debacle about people pulling ads from certain media types, mm -hmm. and he came out, he's like, "Yeah, they, they do that to me." But if you're in the space and you have rely on one format to get your monetary income, you're not going to make it. You're just not. There's and no that, like, and he just went on about that. So it's, he's always been a very good businessman. Yeah, I he well yeah for sure. That's for one sure. thing anyone in the space that knows Phil will tell you right now is that the dude knows his stuff. Inside now, mm -hmm. he knows his stuff. And you're absolutely right. You can't tie yourself to one thing. The Adpocalypse has really hurt our channel as well. It is, wow, the huge difference that Adpocalypse has brought on our channel. Yep. It's been ridiculous. So right now, he's on Patreon. I guarantee you are going to see more from him in the future. There are going to be deals with him because he is the man when it comes to that. So good luck, Philly D. Uh, we'll be watching. Heck yeah, I, I we will. That will be watching all over the place. I will say you did mention there was kind of a little fallback out of this for SourceFed Nerd. Oh yeah, yeah. so uh, SourceFed Nerd is staying with Group Nine, right? And they're now going to be now this nerd. Mm -hmm. But they produced this video that is made from um, Michael Kabbalah, and it's very I probably did not pronounce this. Uh, yeah. Whatever. Uh, he. <laughs> Whatever. Your name doesn't matter, Mike. He, it does, it does, but he produced this video where he was trying to campaign to the audience of SourceFed Nerd to say, hey, stick with us, and it, it really hurt the channel. The video itself had 33,000 thumbs downs, as well as, and this is like a multi-million viewer channel, as well as they lost just by May 4th 36,000 subscribers from this video. Ouch. It's not the way you handle uh, like a transition of, of the guard, effectively. It's true. And he's and he's trying to pander. He's trying to be like, "Hey, look, we're gonna be funny. I'm nerdy. I have the credentials of nerdy." But that was it. Came off as uncomfortable, awkward, and not sincere. That's unfortunate. And it was, and I don't think that was his intent. But even he said, "Hey, this feels awkward." Right. Which means it's it came, it came off as doubly awkward. And I mean, really and truly, when you start off your sentence, "This feels awkward." The entire conversation is going to be awkward at that point. Yeah. I mean, maybe you don't start off with that. Now, granted, it is an awkward situation. Absolutely. They're in a weird place where they are just taking over for some people who have really worked hard to establish relationships with their community. And they're just stepping in and be like, okay, here we are. That is a little awkward. Yep. Business-wise, though, what's your option? You can't start a... You could, but it would make zero sense to start a brand new channel with zero subscribers when you're in possession of a channel, millions of subscribers. Oh, absolutely. And I think, honestly, I think their best bet would have just been to start creating content and then maybe come out with a video like this later. Yeah. Uh, but to start off like this new era of creation on this channel this way, just caused a lot of blowback. Even like the people who used to be on the channel, they were all in the comments like, causing a mug it was it was a disaster in the yeah. comment section i guess when you have like big change maybe you shouldn't wave a red flag be like look at the chain yeah 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 you shouldn't be like we let go of everybody but change. it's okay we have people to take over the people that you loved because this isn't a personality business at change. all <laughs> Uh, you know, give them a chance, though. Yeah. They're, they're working really hard on their stuff, so give them a chance to watch that. We're going to be watching Philly D. I'll look at some SourceFed Nerd. Who knows? Yeah, I'll, nerd uh, now stuff. this nerd. They've... Can't say SourceFed no more. It's not a thing. Now this nerd. Now I'll, this nerd. I'll watch it. I'll look at the things. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. it's. I mean, I I have not unsubscribed yet. It just was very... It was a thing. It was a thing. It was a thing that happened. It was an interesting thing. Some more news from the YouTube world. Yeah. Uh, we talk about this stuff all the time, but Disney has officially just like shuttered Maker Studios. And it, shuttered is a strong word. They're rolling them in to a new digital group. It is the Disney Digital Network. Okay. So Maker Studios is now being pushed into the Disney Digital Network. And Disney's going to use this to really coordinate all of their different outlets, whether it's their social media channels. And there are many, many outlets. It's all their social media channels for all of their character accounts, 
all of their creation for anything that's digital or online, all of these groups are gonna be coming together. And Disney says this is a way that they can more effectively control things. They'll take the smaller creator base that is Maker Studios because they had that huge like get out of Maker thing yep. not too long ago. Yeah. They're going to be able to take them and put them in more appropriate verticals that fit within Disney. So like Strawberry 17 will go on to, I forgot, it's not Pegasus, what's it called? Ah, uh, you know what it is. One of the, one of the network one sections. One of the network sections over there. You know, you've got a number of creators within Maker that are going to fit in these different parts with Disney. And Disney is just basically, you could argue that this move by Disney might be the biggest sign yet that the age of the MCN is dying or dead. So what's the next platform? Is it like a network, like a more traditional network situation, kind of like this? It, it feels like that. It feels like that. I mean, that's kind of what's happening yeah. right now because you are looking at Disney now has their creator network. And instead of, see, here's the problem. Look, at, look here's the problem, guys. This was the big problem with MCNs and multi-channel networks in the first place. The MCNs didn't own any content. They had deals with creators who were making content that they own. So the MCNs, when they go out and they're like, hey, we got all this stuff, you didn't have crap. You really didn't have anything. You didn't invest in creating original content. Now, some MCNs who saw this coming were able to adjust and change and adapt and start creating content. Uh, if you look at these MCNs, like full screen, where they actually started buying and creating and owning content, they're doing some big stuff. They're making big changes. The MCNs that have just have thousands of creators and they were just taking a cut of that and that's how they made money, it's not working for you anymore. If you don't own the content that you create, you're not going to survive as a business. It's just not gonna happen. So for networks to start creating within house and owning that content, that to me feels like where we're going. Kind of like what we're trying to do here. Kind of like what Disney is doing with all of their link stuff. Kind of what full screen is doing. That feels next. And it probably isn't the last iteration either. No. There's going to be something else that we get to. That we're just not there yet. So, I mean, to kind of put this in like merry terms, merry it terms. feels like MCM was like an agent for you yeah. that like just took a cut and tried to hook you up with stuff. And now it feels like you're finally getting like more of a, a business deal out of it. Like you get paid for the content creation. Now you don't own that content. Right. But you get paid for creating a content kind of like a, a Lionsgate or a... Right. right. I, I think that that's kind of what it feels like. Okay. I think that's probably accurate. You know, it's more like if, if, uh, if Fullscreen wants to have talent to create a show on their channel, they're going to hire the talent to come create a show. That doesn't preclude that person from having their own channel and they can do whatever they want on their own channel. Awesome, great. But if full screen wants you to come in, you're gonna be hired again by full screen. They're gonna own that content. Yeah, you're creating something for them. Right. And right. you're more of a, a director, or some form of creationist on that panel. Yeah, creationist. Creationist, that's interesting. It's Sorry. interesting, yes. Uh, <laughs> you're an agnostic on that panel, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, whatever it is, it's really interesting though that the MCN world is kind of dying. I am really curious to see where it goes. I I realized that this was going to happen a few years ago. I'm not saying that to be like, hey, dude, this years ago. But like the writing was on the wall years ago that this was happening. And the discussions happening at VidCon and Playlist and everything were saying, really, MCNs, yep. eh, not great. And we, we actually toyed around with trying to develop an MCN model out of this. And just it didn't feel like the right play. Yeah. And we just decided not to go with it. This move from Disney, I think it validates it. And we're not going to see a lot of MCNs. If you're a creator out there and MCN contacts me and says, hey, we want to join our network, eh, you really need to reconsider that. Unless they're doing something actively to do this, just like if you were saying, like an agent, yeah. all they're doing is taking a cut, guys. Yeah, make, make sure that they're doing something for you. An agent that all they do is take you a cut and introduce you to people, that's <laughs> not like... You don't need that. They're not actually introducing anybody. I can guarantee you that. Guarantee you that. But, but that's 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 how it feels. Yeah, that's how it feels. Let's move on to some other news. Uh, MTV. We talked about this. MTV Movie and TV Awards were on last night. Yeah. Great. Good things. The one thing that you found interesting and we wanted to talk about a little bit is that they pretty much eliminated gendered awards. Yeah, all of their awards were based on, were categorical unless they didn't, weren't gendered. There wasn't like best female actor or best male actor. It was just best actor or best comedic actor. A lot of it was more going towards a, a categorical approach towards award shows. And it opened up this whole conversation 
about are we getting to a place where that can happen in something like the academy? Right. And I, I mean, I want to pose that question to you. Are we at a place where we think the academy can go towards ungendered awards? Well, so Danny and I, probably a year ago on Dot Geek, had a very similar conversation because she really wanted these like non-gendered awards in the academy awards, and we had a long discussion about it. And the thing that I said is that I didn't feel like we were at a point where we could have a non-gendered awards. And it's not because I don't think that a, a woman can compete with a man in these categories, wow. not that at all. It's more about the voting bodies. And that's where we really get into this conversation because if there's an organization that can make this kind of award work, it's probably MTV. Absolutely. They've even said they made this change because they want to reflect their viewership and the opinions and the feelings of their viewership. It makes sense for their viewers to do this. Now let's take that conversation, let's switch it to the Academy. I don't believe, and I'm sorry if this offends anyone, I don't believe that a bunch of old white guys are ready for that kind of change. I just don't believe it yeah. because I don't think that a bunch of old white guys are going to show the same amount of respect for a female performance against a male performance. I don't, and I think it also has to do with the Wrong. voting body, right? Like the voting body isn't diverse enough to represent like well, what, yeah. what we want to see in the award ceremony. Right. Whereas the MTV Awards have always been like this popularity contest. And That's like, all it is, by the way. It really has. It's it always really... been, ever since the MTV, MTV Awards started, it's always been. I mean, there is nothing about an MTV Awards that says quality. I'm just saying. Nothing against you, MTV Awards. Nothing. I'm glad. But, Congratulations to the winners. But it does But it does point to who the fans liked, right? Yeah, yeah, It sure. does point to who the people liked, even if it's not your peers who are voting. For yeah, you. but that's a lot of activation issues, too. True. We, we've had a lot of conversation with this because there have been a number of times where we have been encouraged as a channel to submit for awards that are voted on by the viewers and stuff. And that's cool and great. And then I saw some of the people that we were up against. And we're up against people that have 3 million followers. We can't activate our quality of content, our content quality, whatever you want to say, could be at least as good, maybe better than some of the stuff, but we can't activate the users that this larger channel can. So these kind of conversations for me are always loaded because there's no sense of quality. Great. You like that. Doesn't mean that this stuff isn't good. And if you knew about this stuff, you may like this as well. It's a matter of activation and who got there. These people have been doing it for 15 years. We've been doing it for two and a half, three. Something yeah, like that. yeah. I had this conversation when I was on the panel. I was like, the 10 year mark, guys. That's like, <laughs> I know that's a long time, but you gotta gotta recognize you're comparing yourself to people who've been in the space for 10 years or more. Right, right. You can't. You just can't do it. You just can't so, do it. Um, but back to the conversation about the academy, I I feel very similarly. Um, I would love for us to be in a position where we could have ungendered awards mm -hmm. at the academy. I think that would be great because at that point, you have gotten to the point where it's it's a merit of technicality, not just a merit of like demographics. And I don't know if I think MTV is the test bed to see if that can happen, and MTV's got to prove itself for several years before that can happen before the academy right. will pick it up. Mainly because if the academy picks it up. Let's say they start next year. It doesn't matter who they pick. There's going to be a good chunk of people who are going to scream that it was picked because of some biased reason. Yeah. That's like true. if they did ungender, like if they did best actor award and it was an ungendered award, male or female, it won't matter because right now, like the whole that conversation will be just solely right. picked on the bias. It's either you you just pick a woman to win the award because she's a woman, or you just picked a man award because you're all a bunch of men. And that's because we're not there yet. We're just, we're not. I and, don't think we are. I wish we were. Yeah. And until, like, we can't even get the ethnicity situation fixed. Oh, that's true. So. <laughs> and let's even look. Let's take the next step. Let's look at the number of movies out there. How many women are in leading roles in movies right now? Yep. I mean, it's just not there yet. I wish it was, but we're just not there. This is a great way to start. Maybe you get some of the other award shows like the, uh, I forgot the other, Golden Globe. Maybe the Golden Globes would be one that yeah, could happen. Yeah. Who knows? I, and I think it's just we have to prove it in other places before like the Academy, which is already such a hot target for these like conversations right, right. before that one can start making the changes. Yeah. So we'll see. We'd love to hear what you think about that stuff. We got man, we got so much more to talk about <laughs> on here. Uh we I can't believe we didn't do this for the trailer. There was a trailer that came out that I'm super oh, excited yeah. about. What? The big sick. It's it's gonna be <sighs> 
it's a romantic comedy. Are you excited? You want your, you want some ice cream? I, I want some ice cream. <laughs> I want some ice cream right now. Just thinking about I it. I really am not much of a romantic comedy kind of guy, honestly. I've never. Well, I don't. That's I don't fair. not like them. There are plenty that I find thoroughly enjoyable. It's just not something that I go out of my way to watch. Seeing the trailer for this, it's a totally different take for me, and I am just really intrigued. And I want to see where this goes. Now, are you intrigued because it's like a romantic comedy with an interesting storyline? Are you just intrigued because like anything where one half of the partnership is in a coma is like, a, <laughs> like wait a minute, like this could be an action flick, but like your buddy cop is in a coma, and you're like, would that there's be? Just, really there's just so much to unpack in here because yeah, it's a it's a romantic comedy where one of the people is in a coma. But it's also a romantic comedy where one of the people is Pakistani and is supposed to be an arranged marriage but falls in love with a white girl yep. and breaks up with a white girl but then she goes into a coma and he wants to hang out and he meets her parents who are mad at him for breaking up and they've never really dealt with anyone who's Pakistani and it's there's so much to unpack and I so want to see all those interactions. The acting looks great. Yeah. Uh, it, Ray, Ray Romano. Romano is in it. Yes. Which is weird. If you haven't seen Ray Romano in a while, it's been a while. Uh, he Kumail, plays Camille Nanjiani looks great in this. Uh, Holly Hunter's in it. I haven't seen Holly Hunter in forever, but she's in this. Yes. Uh, I'm just really excited about it. It's, it. It really, I had no clue about this coming out, and then you posted it on Twitter, and I was like, one, Poppy's on right now. Two, this looks amazing. <laughs> Poppy. Poppy. <laughs> Poppy. <laughs> I need I'm, you to know about this. And also, what? <laughs> what is this? Oh, my God, yes. You're speaking all of my languages right now. I, You know, I forgot to check what the actual release date was. I apologize for not getting the release date of The Big Sick on here. I didn't but write it down either. Look look it up for The Big <laughs> Sick with Ray Romano and everybody on there. It's going to be coming out soonish. Yeah, it's it's already in theaters for the trailer. So, the tra right. like, that means it's definitely like a couple months down the road. Like, right. Probably this summer. Probably part of the big summer flicks. So. Why not? But keep an eye out for it. It looks really good. I'd love to hear what all you think about this stuff. June twenty third. June twenty third. Mel, Melanie winner. in the background over there helping us out as always. Uh, moving on to the stuff. We had a first look at more runaways stuff. Yeah, what did you think about that? Mm. No. Well, okay, let's let's be really clear. So the first look was really nothing more than seeing pictures of the cast. Yes. Cool. Great. Thanks for those pictures. I feel like they nailed the the comic book look and feel of pretty Except for freaking Molly Hayes. Freak, look, Molly, Mo, look, yes, you. Molly Hayes has got to be, she's one of my favorite comic book characters of all time. I absolutely adore that character. She's so much fun. She's just this little kid who is a super powerful mutant. The thing, there's so much cute about it. Like when she uses her power and is super strong, she gets super sleepy. So she just like falls asleep. I mean, come on. This is just a little kid. She's like 11 or 12 in the thing. And you look at Molly Hayes on it. There is nothing about that kid that looks like Molly Hayes to me. Now, I haven't seen any of the acting. I haven't seen any of the production. So I can't say. She may encapsulate everything about Molly perfectly. That's, that's highly possible. It's so hard for me to understand how they can nail the casting on everybody else and not get Molly Hayes right. And that bothers me. That bothers me a little bit. Again, I am a Runaways fanboy. You know, when I use my fans. superpower, I get super sleepy too. Do you really? <laughs> I think it's just you know? it's a human thing. It's just a human thing. Oh my God. It's, it's just great. Long story short though, I think probably part of this, and we've talked about this a little bit in the past, the issues with age and film and things like that. Yeah. Because, you know, you can't cast someone who is super young in some of these productions. I say that, and then we have Stranger Things, where these were age-appropriate actors Holy crap, they nailed it. Can you imagine Stranger Things if they had actually cast people older than that? They couldn't have. It wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have worked at all. But they were also in an age-appropriate scenario. True, true. So I don't know if The Runaways has got in a, like age inappropriate scenarios. Or... I mean, it has adult situations, but not with Molly. Okay, so... There's no reason for Molly to have been aged up into this stuff. Yeah. There's no reason at Not all Unless for this they're going to put her in some situation. And you know, while I'm, while I'm thinking about it, you know, we talk about age-appropriate situations. Guys, these high school kids are doing shit. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you, this age-appropriate no stuff. They, mm, I don't, what do you mean? I'm just Mark. saying. I'm just saying. They're, don't kid yourselves. Don't kid are yourselves. They dancing? Are they're the dancing. kids dancing? They're dancing. <laughs> no. Making room for God. What was that movie from? I don't know what that was from. Whatever. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, that's something. Runaways is still happening over here. 
Uh, Hulu has also started a TV program. Yep. So now they have 50 channels and forty dollars. They want your forty dollars. Say we got it better than YouTube. It's, I don't know if they do, but they know. have 50 channels and they're going to be test betting that soon. And I mean, this is more this is more of an attack on cable companies. Please, again. yes, keep on, keep it going. I love it. I love it. I think it's great. It is getting a little oversaturated, I think, because now there's YouTube, there's Hulu, and they're all essentially showing the same things except their own originals. Yep. So yep. you know, how are are we eventually going to get to the point where you're going to have to a la carte? YouTube and Hulu, just so you can see the YouTube originals, the Hulu originals, the Netflix originals. I mean, we're like already that. there, pretty much. You kind of are. That's right. true. Like if you if you cut the cable, which I, oh man, I wish I'd written down the statistic. I read a statistic that the start of 2017 was the highest rate of cable cuts. Yeah. No. For real. Um, so I think I think it's timely. I think yeah. it's important for this. Like this is going to be the new evolution of television, and we're going to have cable companies that just provide internet, and then everyone else. That's the one thing that we're missing, though, right now, though, is that all of these things, Hulu, YouTube, Netflix, they still require an internet connection. The internet connection, 9 out of 10 times, is from your cable provider. Yeah. I guarantee you that this is going to cause some problems, especially with all the talk in the government right now about reclassifying ISPs as Title I instead of Title II. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to look up net neutrality rules because this stuff is happening I guarantee you that if they get the chance, because this has happened in the past, these cable companies are going to start taking actions that will essentially screw up these over-the-top uh, companies like Hulu and YouTube and everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's actually multiple petitions going on for the FCC right now, and mm -hmm. you need to read, like, not that we, we are not usually generally political here, but read the stuff going on about net read neutrality. It's important. It's important for the stuff happening right here in this, like, space. It's right important. Here for just getting your internet, period. This is one of the reasons I love Google, because I have Google Fiber here in my house. Google wants you to be on the internet. Yeah. They just want you to be on the internet. and don't, <laughs> They don't care. So they provide my internet and I get my TV from them, that's fine, but if I don't, they don't care. I'm on the internet. The it's bright great. side to being able to cut your cable, though, is there's plenty of, your phone company can provide you internet access now. It yeah, may not be yeah. the best. Yeah, it may be not. limited. Probably is. But you can get internet that way. You can get internet at your local cafe or your local yeah. whatever. There are multiple ways to get internet yeah. that aren't just getting it through your cable company, but it's still not enough. There's still not enough competition in that space. And the way that space is marketed and the way that space is written up, because it's written up kind of like telephone lines, mm -hmm. uh, it's impossible to make it marketed in the same way. Weird. So, yeah. Uh, pay attention to net neutrality stuff. To me, this is a big thing about it. If you're interested in it and you want to let the uh, government to be, or the gov current government, whatever you want to call whoever's in charge right now in Washington, call them that, that's fine. But if you want to let them know how you feel about it, you need to let your voice heard. And the FCC has made it very, very difficult over the past year or so to actually let your voice heard. But if you go to the website, gofccyourself.com, gofccyourself.com, that will take you straight to a page where you can click on a link and it will give you a space where you can leave comments. Yeah, because FCC just opened up for comments. That's yes. a good point. That This is one of the first things that they, they haven't done this in the past. But they've also made it really hard. It used to yeah. be really easy to do. They have hidden it past several levels to leave yeah. comments. I'm glad you had that link. Good this job, link Mark. will go straight to where you need to go. Just leave on there. I think that there's a button on the right that says edit or something. I don't know what it is. But go FCC yourself. Make Not your comment, cool. like, research your stuff, make your comment, let it be known. Yep. Uh, another trailer came out, House of Cards. I'm so behind the season and I need to catch up, but it's so exciting and so terrifying. This is like the trailer I didn't need to watch right now. It's just not... I didn't need. I didn't need this. You in didn't my need life. this? I don't think many of us need this trailer. But, okay, I should say I have not watched House of Cards. I know. I know. I know, and I'm my, actually, my biggest, like, regret right now is not having, like, done a reaction video before we came live, because Mark's reaction to this was just beautiful. You know, here's the thing. So, first of all, I found the trailer, like, super disturbing. Like, at the end of it, I was like, F you, dude, whoever you are. F you. I was really mad about it. The thing that was really disturbing was Mary and Melanie's reaction. They're like, but we love them. Like, what? Are you kidding me? You love how... This guy, evil. What is, how, how is this? so a, evil. This is how things happen. This is how bad things happen in our country. No! That, oh my God. That was the thing that bothered me the most about everything. The show looks good, though. The show yeah. looks great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got, you, 
I just How do you love this guy? You have to watch it to understand. I don't understand at all. He um, seems clearly evil. Frank and Claire are like messed up relationship goals. Frank and Claire are evil. Absolutely. I don't understand what's going and on. And you kind of kind of love to hate don't, them. I don't understand. They kind of just, you, just, you got to, it's, I don't know. Sometimes you just, I don't know. I don't know either. Your 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 brain's hurting me. This is how bad things happen. Well, it's people. good. It's good in fiction. It's yeah, not, but it's not great in real life. Yeah, but we're not. So, it's a little too not, close. It's a little it's, too close, it's Mary. Not, a little too close. It's season five. It's been, it's, it's, it's had five years. A little too close. Well, a little too close. You know what, Mark? What? Five years. It's time for sponsorship. It is time for sponsor fishing. <laughs> sponsor, you know what? Let's get real for a minute. Because normally we're in sponsor fishing. We, we find something, and we're like, well, that's weird. Maybe they'll give us some money. That'd be cool if we could do that. But you know what? We're going to make this one real today. Yeah. We want to talk to you, Rico. 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 Hey, how you doing? How, how you doing? How you doing, Rico? I hear you got some awesome 360 camera. You might have a 360 camera called the Theta 360. It's supposed to be pretty good. I'm hearing great things. But you know what? We would love to have a 360 camera here. We could do all sorts of great stuff with that 360 camera. We could put a 360 camera right in the middle of this room, and all of you at home could experience my living room. Yeah, you missed Xander earlier. Xander was over here having yeah, fun. Yeah, you could have seen Xander. Xander uh, we could have we could put it in the middle of our D and D sessions. Could put it in the middle. And you of can look at whoever's also. face you want to at any given time. You can just turn around and you can see my kitchen. You can see bunch. you can see Mel moderating your comments. Yes, Mel over there moderating comments. Or you can see editing us playing. the show. <laughs> you can maybe even see actor behind the the scenes yeah. doing stuff over there. You can see all the stuff with a 360 camera. I mean, I mean Theta, I have seen you use at many conferences and that has been a cool experience to be able to watch a conference talk and see the crowd. Why not D and D? Do you have somebody doing D and D? I know I know I know people. We'll do it. You know what else I'd love to do though? What? I would love to do like a live music show with three sixty cameras. Please. Like put a camera like in the audience so it's like you're at the concert. Do like a house party thing. So we just have like house band playing. We've got people hanging out. Rocksmith stream with 360 cameras so that Darkman can completely ignore me and watch the cats. Watch the yeah, that would be that would be perfect. That would be perfect. Rico, we're talking to you. Work with us, Rico. We want to work with you. We love a mutually you. beneficial It'll relationship. It'll be great. It'll we'll be make fabulous. all the things. We'll make all the things with you. With you, not for with, with you. you. We'll be a part of it. So that's our sponsor fishing. What time it is? What time is it? Time for the hype train! Took it to the choo choo. What's your hype today? <gasps> I am so hyped because there is a documentary about Miyazaki and it's coming out soon and it's made by NHK. And I, I mean, it's really cool because it's following Miyazaki going from like physical media to retirement, pretty much calling himself a failure. Like, if you ever wanted to see, a man go, wait, what am I going to do with my life? I'm in retirement, but I can do things now. And then decide at 70 something years old that he was going to get into digital like media creation and his growth in learning a completely different format. It, it sounds cool. It sounds so cool. So I am really excited for this documentary. Um, I just forgot the name of the documentary, but I will have links down below. It's following Miyazaki. And I mean, just, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. I want to see. I want to see Miyazaki just be human because he's always this like inhuman character in my head. He does have this kind of aura about fans of Miyazaki. Is like, but he's Miyazaki. I know. Oh. I know. And the idea of humanizing him and seeing him like he, he's like the Gordon Ramsay of animation. Is he mean to all the people he works with? He has just got high standards. All right, high standards. <laughs> High standards. He's got a high <laughs> standards. High, high standards. All right, well, the Miyazaki thing, the, the link to that will be down in the doobly doo down yeah. there. You know what my hype is? What's your hype? I'm going to switch this thing off. <laughs> my hype, I want all of you to know of a channel, which maybe you know, maybe you don't know, but you need to check out a YouTube channel called Glove and Boots. Uh, that is, it's basically a YouTube channel that features puppets. It is all puppets. It has, for a few years now, been one of my favorite things online. And they just came out not too long ago and said they were starting a season seven. They were kind of sporadic for a bit, but they were doing season seven. And their goal is to get 100 videos out between then and the rest of this year. They've even started a gaming channel. They're going to be live streaming gaming as puppets, guys. Mario and Fafa on Glove and Boots are two of the best things online right now. If you are not watching them, you are missing 
so much beautiful, funny stuff. Their sense of humor is spectacular. The puppetry is great. They make puppets of all sorts of things for random reasons, and it all works so perfectly. Uh, they even did one recently that was behind the scenes of making glove and boots video. And as somebody who's been doing videos online for a few years now, holy crap, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Absolutely loved it. I first fell in love with them several years back. They actually had a contest where they hid $10,000 in gold coins somewhere in New York. And they left clues in a series of videos about pirates who lost their gold. And if you could decipher the clues, you could find where the gold was and you could find it. Sad end of that story over here, a hurricane hit in New York before anybody could find it and destroyed a lot of the landmarks. <laughs> but they did, they went back to where it was, they dug it up and they donated the $10,000 to Hurricane Recovery. So oh, that's that was, beautiful. Yeah, that really I cool. actually never watched that series. That's amazing. Oh, it was great. It was great. It, we, Elizabeth and I, my wife Elizabeth and I would sit there and every time a new one was out, we were like, all right, so what are they saying here? If we do this, because we were taking a trip to New York, and we we're like, we're going to freaking find that. We're going to do that thing. And we got to like the sixth point, the sixth episode, and we got stuck. We could not figure out where to go from there. No. Ended up, we were actually pretty close to the end of it. Glove so and Boots just... for the longest time was like Andy and I's weekly watch. Like They would come so, up and we're like, you got to watch this, because we know we're going to laugh. We know it's going to be good. It's always good. It's like M Muppets for now. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> for I, adults. <laughs> I don't want to say it's better than the Muppets because Elizabeth will kill me, but I love Glove and Boots it's so, so good. much. It's it is so great. Good. So check that out. If you haven't checked it out, Glove and Boots over there on YouTube. And that's all we got for today. Yeah, that's it. That's all we got. Uh, so as always, thanks for hanging out. We want to hear what you have to say. So leave comments down here. You should join our Discord channel. There's a Discord link down below. Join that and let us know what you think there as well. Yes. And follow us on the Twitters and do the things as well so that you can let us know on the Twitters. Uh, other than that, I think we'll see you later. Thanks a lot, Mary. It's been fun. Yeah. High five. We'll see you all later. Remember, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Good night. Bye, Bye friends.